Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back. So if you're wondering how you can watch Netflix from anywhere in the world, regardless of your location and regardless of what you're looking to watch, well, you're able to do that, but you will need a tool, and that is a VPN. Now, why do we need a VPN? Well, a VPN is essentially going to route your connection so that it looks like you're somewhere else. So if I go ahead and connect to the American server with ExpressVPN, for example, you'll notice that it will say that I am now in the United States if I just look up my IP address using any IP finder. Now, again, this is not because I'm physically in the United States. It's simply because I'm connected to the American server within ExpressVPN. Now, I'll talk about these VPNs in just a minute, but essentially, all you need to do in order to access any streaming service or any streaming library on Netflix, what you're going to need is simply to download and install one of these VPNs. You can use the links below if you'd like to save a little bit more money on the subscriptions. Once you've downloaded and installed one of these VPNs, let's say you want to access, let's just go with the, I don't know, German Netflix library. Let's say you want to watch that for whatever reason, and let's just connect to it. Once you're connected, all you need to do to access the German Netflix library is just simply go back to Netflix after having turned on the VPN, give it a refresh, and you should be good to go. So that is basically it. And by the way, the same thing works for any other streaming service for the most part. Uh, you can just give it a refresh and you will get that library that you're looking for. And that's basically it. Now, as far as which one of these could be the best choice for you, well, let's talk a little bit about them because ExpressVPN, for me personally, would be the best option simply because it's, well, super easy to use. I specifically like the fact that it connects in just less than a couple of seconds. If I were to try to connect right now with Nord or Surfshark, they will connect. But if you notice right here, if I go ahead and click the server on NordVPN, you'll notice that it takes a few more seconds to connect than Express. And it's the same thing with Surfshark. Now, that doesn't mean that Nord and Surfshark are bad in any way. It's just that Express is so fast and efficient, which is why I like to use it over Nord and Surfshark. So that's basically one of the main reasons. Now, as far as the difference between these VPNs, look, if you're looking to learn much more about these VPNs, as far as the privacy policy, speed, uh, streaming and torrenting capabilities, and all the features that are available and the security, you can check the reviews below. But what I can tell you is that they will all work remarkably well with streaming services. You'll be able to torrent to your heart's content without any bandwidth limitations or throttling. You have plenty of servers and locations so you can explore all kinds of libraries from all over the world. You have over 3000 servers in 105 countries with Express, over 6000 servers in 61 countries with Nord, and over 3,200 servers in 100 countries with Surfshark. So plenty of options there. And of course, you do have the necessary features that you need to keep your devices as secure as they can be. And these features will be the kill switch and split tunneling. Now, if you're not familiar, the kill switch will stop your internet connection if the VPN disconnects unexpectedly. So essentially, this will make sure that you're only going to be connected to the internet while you're protected by the VPN. Otherwise, it will cut your connection, protecting you from accidental leaks so that nobody, including your ISP or government, can ever know what you're doing online. Now, split tunneling is essentially a feature that allows you to choose which applications are using the VPN and which are not. So it's very self-explanatory. You can have selected applications use the VPN or you can have selected applications not use the VPN while the rest of your apps and connection is routed through the VPN tunnel. Or again, it's a very simple and useful feature. Unfortunately, this is not available on Mac, iOS, or any iPads. Uh, this is only available on Windows. The advanced protection, this is where you'll see the tracker blocker and the malicious sites blocker. So it's called Threat Manager here. You wanna just check those and make sure they're checked. And if you wanna use ExpressVPN, 
as an adult site filter or adult content filter, you're able to do that within the parental control section right here. You also have protocols. I would definitely recommend using the fastest protocol. And you have a bunch of shortcuts that'll show up once you turn on the VPN. So you can add shortcuts here. Uh, and you have browser extensions. And that's basically it. That's all you need to know to well be able to use any vpn for that matter because nordvpn and surfshark still have all these features and more than expressvpn actually as far as features i would say expressvpn is the best if you're looking for a super easy vpn to use that you can use reliably to well do anything as far as streaming uh, torrenting or simply protecting your device and you can secure up to eight devices per subscription now with nordvpn sure you'll be securing two less devices per subscription at six and you have about 40 less countries but you're getting a whole bunch of bonus features for a very reasonable price so it's still a huge bang for the buck now if you're looking for the biggest bang for the buck you want to go with surfshark you'll be able to secure virtually an unlimited number of devices with just a single subscription which makes it a perfect option if you're looking to share it around with as many family and friends as you would like. And besides that, you still get all the features. You're not really sacrificing much on performance. Sure, Express and Nord are still faster than Surfshark, but that doesn't mean that Surfshark is slow. It's just that Express and Nord are that quick. So this ends up being the best budget VPN that gets the job done at the cheapest possible cost without really sacrificing much on anything. So that is basically how you can use a VPN for Netflix or any other streaming service. And I hope you guys learned from these recommendations here. Again, if you're interested in learning more about these VPNs before you make the purchase, you'll find the full reviews down below and you'll also find links to pricing discounts. Now, out of curiosity, I did speak with ExpressVPN and they mentioned that a lot of people end up spending more on monthly renewals than they would have with the yearly plan. Because the typical pattern is that people renew monthly, thinking they might not need the VPN long term. So unfortunately, they end up spending more money than they would have going with the yearly plan, especially with this discount that's available below. You can claim this and get three extra months for free. And it's the same thing, by the way, with the other VPNs, you'll be able to claim free months using the links below. But ultimately, if you know you're not going to need Express for longer than a month, definitely get the month plan. But if there's a chance you might end up using it longer than a month, you might want to go with the longer term plan, whether it's six months or 12 months. And with Nord and Surfshark, obviously, the longer, the cheaper. And you can get really good rates, especially with the links below. So that is pretty much it for this video. If you guys are interested, again, in any of these VPNs, you'll find everything you need as far as reviews and discounts in the description down below. Besides that, comment below if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer all of them. Like and subscribe if you'd like to support the channel and stay up to date with everything VPNs and cybersecurity. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Have a wonderful day.